So after the critical and commercial success of Star Wars The Force Awakens, it's now time to look to the future and talk about Star Wars Episode 8, due out May 2017. This film looks like it could maybe be even better than Episode 7, as it's bringing on Ryan Johnson to direct, the director of Looper, and a couple of awesome Breaking Bad episodes. My name is Asak Schrader. You can go f*** yourself. So I'm here today to talk about what I hope to see in this next installment. Also, as I am talking about the follow-up here, spoiler alert for The Force Awakens. You've been warned. <laughs> Episode 7 was, among other things, the passing on of the torch to a new cast, so let's keep it like that. Sure, you can have your Chewbacca and your Leia, but focus on these new characters, because to me, honestly, they're more interesting than the older cast now. Again, you can have them there in the background, but I really want to see where these new characters go. Specifically Poe, I love Finn and Rey, they're great, but we just didn't get enough Oscar Isaac, who's one of the best actors out there. Just having this trio interacting throughout a new series of films would be amazing, and I feel like Ryan Johnson could do that kind of thing really well. I don't know your name. My name is Asak Schrader. Which leads me into a similar point. At the end of The Force Awakens, Rey is reunited with her father, maybe. I don't know, that's just my theory. And I'm guessing Luke is going to have a vaguely similar role to Han Solo, the older mentor there to guide these new players throughout this universe. And that's perfectly fine, but again, I don't want him to steal focus from Finn, Rey, and Poe. He can teach some stuff, he can have some emotional and powerful scenes, and he should have an awesome lightsaber fight. A Rey and Luke tag team fight against a villain of some kind would be badass, just putting that out there. But don't overuse him just for nostalgia. Use him just as much as it fits with the plot. If he needs to have a really big role, great, just as long as it's for the story's purpose and not just have fan service. This is one of the main things that the original trilogy did right. They kept one or two main villains throughout all three films, Darth Vader and the Emperor. There were other minor bad guys to take out along the way, but it kept the main villains consistent and that really works. If you change out the villain for every film, you don't have enough time to get it all invested in them. And so when they're defeated and or redeemed, you don't feel that much. For this new series, these villains can be Kylo Ren or Ben Solo, whatever you want to call him, Supreme Leader Snoke, and to a lesser degree, General Hux. Now Kylo Ren is the obvious pick, who is an interesting character, he's probably related to at least one of these three in some way. And I really want to see where his character can be taken after what he did in episode 7. Then there's Snoke, who a lot of people didn't like, I guess because it was CG in this otherwise very practical world, but I was personally really intrigued by his character. We know basically nothing about him, so it'll be cool to find out more. Why does he have that scar? Is he really that huge, or was it just dramatic effect by the hologram tech? And is he Darth Plagueis, as many people have speculated? It's great to have questions after a movie, and hopefully some of those will be answered here. Now, let's be real here. The Force Awakens was more or less a retread of A New Hope. Nothing really wrong with that. It was a good way to introduce us to new characters and get us back into the franchise. But now that's done. Let's switch up the formula a bit. I'm not saying change stuff drastically. The structure for any Star Wars movie is going to be similar in some way. But I don't want to see this new trilogy be a remake of A New Hope, a remake of Empire, and a remake of Jedi. Let's take this in new directions. That's what made Empire Strikes Back so awesome in the first place. It did something different. The Force Awakens, while I thought it was a fantastic fun time at the movies, it was also a bit predictable. From the start, I could tell more or less the outline of the plot. There were some twists along the way, but overall, there weren't that many surprises for me. It didn't detract that much from the experience, but if that trend continues onto these subsequent films, then they'll become boring and repetitive. So Ryan Johnson, if you're watching this, which you 100% are not, switch up the formula a bit and make something unique. Also, I would just like to add something about my channel to this video. I've had a lot of requests to make a best and worst of Star Wars video, which does seem like the logical thing to do now. The only problem is, I saw the prequels quite a long time ago, and so I don't exactly remember everything about them. So I'm going to have to re-watch them to make that video, and it might take me a while to get around to doing that. Hopefully that video will be out sometime in the summer, or at the latest when Rogue One comes out. So yeah, that's why that video isn't out yet. So those were the things I want to see in Star Wars Episode 8. What do you want to see? Let me know in the comments below. Also, bonus question, what do you think the subtitle for this will be? So it's kind of hard to predict, but one fan actually did it for The Force Awakens, so who knows. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram at BHL underscore Hudson, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.